Hi, I'm Joe, Auto Man 26 on Archery Talk. If you're watching this video, you're probably somebody who's thinking about getting into string building. I encourage that. String building is a lot of fun. It's very rewarding. It's addicting. You'll get hooked on it for sure. But if you're going to build strings, you're going to need a jig. Well, you've probably looked around at the price of string jigs and discovered that they're expensive. I mean, you're going to spend $400, $450 on up for a decent jig. So you've probably been thinking to yourself, hmm, wonder if I could build my own. But where do I start? This is where you start. This jig here has been a affectionately labeled the El Cheapo. There's nothing cheap about this jig, except what you're going to pay for the parts. This is a solid jig. I uh, many times have run this jig up to 300, 350, 400 pounds. It's very, very strong. It's deceptively strong, and it handles it very well. One day, I accidentally ran one of these up to 600 pounds. Scared me to death but it held. What kind of a string does it build? Strings built on a jig like this have won tournaments on the world stage. If this jig can win, can produce strings that will win world-class tournaments, it'll certainly build strings good enough for league night, plunking around in the backyard, up in the tree stand, it builds an excellent string. Well, I spent three years designing this jig. You're going to say, three years it took you to design that? Yeah, he did. It's very simple. It's, it's the basics. But the reason it took me three years to design it was that the jig I was going to design had to meet three specific requirements. First of all, it had to be a jig that could be built from off-the-shelf parts. And with the exception of the McMaster die spring, I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. With the exception of that spring, you can walk into Menards and you can purchase everything you see here and walk out the door for $75. Now you look at that jig, that's a good piece of equipment. It's only going to cost you $75. So it had to be built from off-the-shelf parts. Next, it had to be affordable, like I just mentioned. $75. Very affordable. But a very important requirement it had to meet was that it had to be something that could be built by darn near anyone. If you can't weld, you don't need to weld. There's no welding on this jig. I can't weld either. If you don't have any exotic metalworking machinery, you don't need it. You don't need an end, lay, end mill. You don't need a lathe. You don't need a bridge port, a CNC, any of these kind of things. You will need a drill press or access to a drill, drill press. And if not, you can take these parts down to a machine shop and they can punch the six holes required. It will cost you very little. So it had to be something that could be built by darn near anyone. When I first started building these, I had a uh, I had a drill press, a file, and a hacksaw. If that's all you've got, a drill press, a file, and a hacksaw, that's all you're going to need to build this. It's a very good jig. Easy to build. Kind of a fun build. You'll, you'll enjoy it. It's a rewarding build. Now, I put together six videos that are going to guide you step by step by step, point by point, through the entire build process. We're going to leave no stone unturned. At the end of the videos, if you follow through, you can even build right along with the videos. That's great. When we get all done, you are going to have one very, very fine string jig. And... It's a good feeling when you stand on the shooting line 
and you start busting axes with the string you built yourself on a jig you built yourself, you're going to enjoy that. That's quite a feeling. So, enough with listening to me stand here beating my gums. Well, let's start building this thing. Alright, before you can build your jig, you're going to need to get some parts. So, let's cover the parts that you're going to be needing for your jig. First of all, you're going to need four four-hole corner brackets. Now, these can be unistrut or super strut parts, doesn't matter. Both companies make pretty much the same thing. You're going to need four of these four-hole plates. You're going to need two 5 8 by 6 inch coarse thread carriage bolts. You are going to need two 5 8 inch nylock nuts. Now, nylock nuts are the kind that have the little uh, nylon insert in them. You're going to be needing two of those. You're going to need two one inch eye bolts. Now, these are one inch. They are three eighths by eight inches. You're going to need two of those. You're going to need four three eighths coarse thread nuts to fit your three eighths eye bolts. You're going to need four 5 16 washers, like so. You're going to need eight half inch by one and a half inch coarse thread bolts. Mine are um, grade eight. You don't need grade eight. But you're going to need eight one half by one and one half inch coarse thread bolts. You are going to need 12 7 16 inch washers. You will need five 9 16 washers. 9 16 can be a little hard to find. If you can't find a 9 16, don't worry about it. You can get a half inch washer and we'll just file the hole out a little bit. That's no big deal uh, at all. You're going to need four half inch channel nuts like these right here. Nut with the spring, it's a unistrut part. You're going to need half inch channel nuts. You are going to need two shaft collars, the kind with the little set screw in them. Two quarter inch shaft collars. You're going to need four coarse thread half inch bolts. I'm sorry, half inch nuts. You are going to need four 5 8 coarse thread nuts, like so. You're going to need some roll pins and some quarter 20 bolts. Now, they're going to be three inches long each. As we get into the fabrication, you're going to have a choice of one way to go or the other. You'll be able to use either two roll pins and two bolts or three roll pins and one bolt. That will we will cover later. Um, I do recommend that the bolts that you get make those grade eight. They need a little extra strength. You are going to need eight inch, about eight inches worth of what they call half inch pipe, half inch nipple pipe. Now the pipe is bigger than a half inch, and the inside diameter is about five-eighths of an inch once we get it cut and uh, filed down in the middle. <clears throat> but it's half-inch pipe or half-inch nipple pipe. Don't worry about the finish. Doesn't matter because we are going to be filing that finish off uh, as we proceed with our build. You are going to need one McMaster card die spring. Now this is part number 957. 3K81. I will put this in a parts list as soon as I'm done with the explanation here. And the last thing you are going to need is 10 feet of channel. This is inch and 5 eighths unistrut or super strut channel. These are the parts you're going to need. You're going to spend about $75 or so to uh, purchase these parts. Get your parts, let's get all set, 
and let's go build a jig.